Hello, listener. Thank you for listening to our content. Remember to follow us here on the platform. We prepared a graphic of the book with the author's key points and main ideas. Click that book graphic link in description now and have access to an illustrated material with simple and easy steps so you know everything about the book in minutes. The China Study, the most comprehensive study of nutrition ever conducted, and the startling implications for diet, weight loss, and long-term health by Colin and Thomas Campbell. In many affluent societies, there's an alarming increase in the rate of cancer, heart disease, and other chronic diseases. This book presents extensive scientific evidence for a simple and lasting solution to health and disease. Colin Campbell was one of the lead scientists of the China Cornell Oxford Project, or the China Study. This was the most comprehensive study ever undertaken to explore the relationship between nutrition and disease. This study, combined with lab research and various studies, showed the risks of a diet high in animal protein and the benefits of a whole foods, plant-based diet. The Health Crisis the USA spends more money per capita on health care than any other country. Yet, Americans have some of the worst disease rates. Two-thirds of Americans are overweight. A third are killed by heart diseases. One out of 11 Americans has diabetes. And the American Cancer Society estimates that a typical American male or female has a 47% or 35% chance of getting cancer in his or her lifetime. Meantime, health care costs are exploding, while errors and adverse effects from medication and surgery contribute to over 200,000 deaths a year. There's a simple, more sustainable solution to this health crisis. By changing what we eat, we can prevent and even reverse many of our most chronic diseases. Unfortunately, we're surrounded by misinformation about health and nutrition. Much of the info in the public domain are shaped by powerful commercial organizations and lobby groups, such as those from the dairy and pharmaceutical industries. They have the financial resources to fund and publicize scientific research that advance their commercial interest. They can also discredit or mask research that don't support their interests. Huge marketing budgets are being set aside for educational programs to influence the masses from young, deepening entrenched beliefs in existing systems and practices. Scientific data also creates confusion and misinformation when it's oversimplified or taken out of context. Nature is complex. You can't manipulate the ecosystem by tweaking the rainfall or adding a bacterium. Likewise, it's almost impossible to establish a causal relationship in health. We know there's a strong link between smoking and lung cancer, but no one can prove 100% that smoking causes lung cancer. A statement like, beta carotene is proven to reduce lung cancer, can be misleading. Beta carotene works with other chemicals to reduce lung cancer when it's consumed in whole foods, but when consumed in isolation as a pill, it actually increases lung cancer. The key to health is to adopt a holistic approach to nutrition. In this summary, we'll present the key insights in three parts. Fundamental concepts, diseases of affluence, and the guide to good nutrition. Part 1. Fundamental Concepts on Nutrition and Disease most of the calories we consume come from proteins, fats, and carbohydrates. For optimal health, we also require small amounts of vitamins and minerals. There are hundreds of thousands of proteins, each structured as a chain of amino acids. The human body requires eight essential amino acids. A quality protein provides the right amino acids to produce new proteins efficiently. Traditionally, animals have been considered to be the best source of protein because they're closest to human proteins. While plants individually lack one or more essential amino acids, however, you can still get all eight amino acids from a range of plants. 
And there's now strong evidence to suggest that high levels of animal-based protein are associated with various diseases. Cancer progresses in three stages. The first stage, initiation, is like planting a seed. This is the process where our body cells change permanently after interacting with chemicals called carcinogens. This creates a potential for cancer. However, cancer cells don't grow till the second stage, promotion. It's like how a seedling sprouts from a seed, which takes time and only happens under the right conditions. Finally, in stage three, progression, the cancer cells spread throughout your whole body like weeds in a garden. Lab research suggests a strong link between protein and cancer. In India, lab rats were given aflatoxin, one of the most potent carcinogens. One group was given a 20% protein diet, a level close to Western diet, while the other group was given a 5% protein diet. Every rat in the first group had evidence of liver cancer, while every rat in the second group didn't. This provides strong evidence of the link between protein and cancer. Foci are clusters of cell that predict tumor growth. Animals given high doses of aflatoxin and a low-protein diet developed much less foci compared with those with low doses of aflaxitoxin, but a high-protein diet. This suggests that nutrition plays a bigger role than carcinogens. In fact, the pattern was consistent at different stages of tumor development in rats. When protein intake increased to 20%, foci development shot up. When protein intake dropped to 5%, foci development fell. Specifically, foci development started at around 10% protein intake, which was higher than the rat's protein requirements. Likewise, humans only need 5-6% to of energy from protein. The RDA, or Recommended Daily Allowance of 10%, already includes a buffer. Yet, most Americans consume an excessive amount of 15 to 16 percent protein. People with hepatitis B virus, or HBV, were believed to have a 20 to 40 percent higher risk of liver cancer. Experiments were done with two groups of mice with HBV. Mice with HBV and a 6 percent protein diet had almost no liver cancer activity, while those with 22% protein diet had rapid cancer growth. Interestingly, plant protein didn't promote cancer growth in the same way as animal protein, even when consumed at higher levels. However, casein, which makes up 87% of cow's milk protein, promoted cancer in both humans and mice. Experiments with other nutrients also showed consistent findings. First, nutrition played a bigger role than carcinogens in controlling cancer promotion. Second, cancer growth increased with nutrients from animal-based foods and decreased with plant-based foods. In short, cancer initiation is less critical than cancer promotion. Most of us will have some carcinogens in our body, whether they develop into cancer cells and spread depend on the conditions in our body, which is influenced by diet and nutrition. The question is, how far do the animal lab experience reflect real-life human experiences? This is where the China study came in. In 1983, 6,500 adults were randomly selected from 65 rural counties in China. Over 20 years, Researchers tracked how these people ate, lived, and died to examine the effects of 367 variables. The research found two distinct groups of disease. First, diseases of affluence, like cancer and diabetes, come from nutritional excess. These are similar to the so-called Western diseases found in America. Second, diseases of poverty like pneumonia and parasitic disease, come from nutritional lack and poor sanitation. Basically, the study found that people who ate the most plant-based foods had the least or no chronic diseases. 
Those who ate the most animal protein had the most heart disease, cancer, and diabetes. Let's zoom in on the details of various nutrients. Blood cholesterol was found to be the strongest predictor of Western diseases. When blood cholesterol fell from 170 to 90 mg per deciliter, there was a distinct drop in a variety of cancers. Higher consumption of animal-based food like meat, milk, and eggs was strongly associated with higher blood cholesterol, while higher consumption of plant-based food like fruits and vegetables was associated with lower blood cholesterol. Generally, animal-based food also contains more fat than plant-based food. For example, carrots produce 4% calories from fat, while whole cow's milk produces 64% calories from fat. Previous studies found a correlation between breast cancer and the exposure to female hormones. In rural China, lower amounts of animal protein and dietary fat were associated with a later start of menstruation, lower levels of estrogen and prolactin, and an earlier menopause. These jointly reduced the women's exposure to female hormones, explaining the lower breast cancer rates in rural China compared to most Western countries. Dietary fiber aids digestion, removes bad chemicals from the body, and prevents constipation-related diseases. High fiber consumption from plants was linked with less colorectal cancer. Antioxidants were also associated with less cancer. Antioxidants are only found in plants. They give fruits and vegetables their bright colors and protect the plants from stray electrons and free radicals during photosynthesis. Animals get their antioxidants by consuming plants. Humans also produce small amounts of free radicals due to exposure to the sun or pollutants. Without protection by antioxidants, our tissues may be damaged, leading to cataracts, cancer, hardening of the arteries, etc. Surprisingly, the rural Chinese ate more carbohydrates and 30% more calories than typical Americans, yet had 20% lower body weight. There's a key difference in the types of carbs being consumed. Natural carbs from plants come as a bundle of simpler carbs, complex carbs like dietary fiber and other vitamins and minerals. However, simple carbs found in soft drinks and cookies are refined carbs stripped of fiber, vitamins, and minerals. That is, they're empty calories that are easily absorbed by the body. Unlike refined carbs, natural carbs actually help to increase metabolic rates and facilitate weight loss. Hello, listener. Thank you for listening to our content. Remember to follow us here on the platform. We prepared a graphic of the book with the author's key points and main ideas. Click that book graphic link in description now and have access to an illustrated material with simple and easy steps so you know everything about the book in minutes. Part 2. Diseases of Affluence Overall, it's clear that lifestyle affects diseases of affluence more than genes. Such diseases tend to be much more common in countries with rich, meaty Western diets. In developing countries, such diseases are higher amongst those who adopt Western diets or migrate to Western countries. And a whole food, plant-based diet universally counters such diseases. Let's take a closer look at the specific diseases of affluence. Heart Diseases 40% of Americans are expected to die from heart disease. A key component of heart disease is plaque, a greasy layer lining the inner walls of the arteries. Plaque is usually separated from the bloodstream by a cap. If the cap gets eroded over time and ruptures, the plaque and blood mix together, creating a clot that blocks the artery and cuts off oxygen to the heart. Surgery, like coronary bypass or heart transplants, won't stop heart diseases. Within 10 years, 50% of bypass surgery patients would have died, had a heart attack, or a return of chest pains. A good diet is a more lasting solution to reduce blood cholesterol and the risk of heart disease. 
In 1946, a doctor split heart attack survivors into two groups. Half continued their normal diet, while the rest tried a diet with lower fat, less animal-based food, and more plant-based food. After 12 years, the entire normal diet group had died, while 35% of the controlled diet group was still alive. Another 18 patients were put on a whole food plant-based diet. Over 11 years, their cholesterol levels fell by almost 50%, artery blockage was reduced, and there was no coronary events. The only exception was a patient who had clinical chest pain after straying from the diet for two years. Another doctor's dietary plan helped patients to reduce bad cholesterol by 38% and reduce artery blockage by 4% in just one year. Obesity If your body mass index, or BMI, is more than 25, you're overweight. If your BMI is more than 30, you're obese. To be healthy, you need a good diet and a reasonable amount of exercise. A whole food plant-based diet helps with weight control because such foods have less calories than refined carbs and protein. The high fiber content makes you full and it increases your metabolic rate and physical activity. Generally, you can eat as much whole plant foods as you want and still lose weight. Rats that were fed a 5% casein diet were much more active than those on a 20% casein diet. Vegetarians have also been found to have a slightly higher metabolic rate. However, many people choose to believe in crash diets that are unsustainable and even harmful. For example, the Atkins diet advocates loads of protein, meat, and fats with minimal carbs. It doesn't differentiate between complex and refined carbs, nor plant versus animal proteins. This diet has led to short-term weight loss but also constipation, bad breath, headaches, risks of kidney damage, osteoporosis, and even sudden death. Diabetes Diabetes is the condition where blood sugar levels are too high. It brings many complications such as strokes and blindness. Type 1 diabetes occurs when the insulin production cells in the pancreas fail. Type 2 diabetes occurs when the body doesn't respond properly to insulin. There's no known medical cure for diabetes, yet various studies have suggested that diet could prevent and reverse diabetes. Specifically, people on whole food, plant-based diets are less prone to diabetes compared to those with high-fat, high-protein, animal-based diets. The right diet can also reduce blood cholesterol levels and allow diabetic patients to stop medication. So long as the diet is sustained, the results continue. For example, a high-fiber, high-carbs, low-fat diet was tested on diabetics. After three weeks, the type 1 diabetics saw a 30% drop in cholesterol levels and could reduce their insulin medication by about 40%. 96% of the type 2 diabetics could stop their insulin medication altogether. Common Cancers Breast, prostate, and large bowel cancers are the three most common cancers in the U.S. All three cancers can be mitigated through nutrition, and diet is more critical than genes. Earlier, we learned how breast cancer risk is associated with the exposure to excess amounts of female hormones, which is affected by food intake. Genetic tendencies can also be controlled with nutrition to reduce the chances of cancer cells sprouting and spreading. Only about 50% of women with pre-existing genes get breast cancer, and one study found that less than 3% of all breast cancer cases are attributed to family history. Screening helps with early cancer detection but doesn't prevent cancer. To manage their hormone levels, many women resort to drugs or even mastectomy when better results can be achieved with exercise and the right dietary habits. 
Prostate cancer represents about 25% of all tumors in the U.S. It's widely associated with the consumption of meat, dairy products, and eggs. A whole food, plant-based diet was tested on men with prostate cancer. Within a year, they saw bigger improvements in cancer markers and genes compared with those on standard treatments. Colorectal cancer is the fourth most fatal cancer worldwide and the second most fatal cancer in the U.S. Dietary fiber from food correlates with a lower risk of colorectal cancer. In fact, eating an extra 10 grams of dietary fiber a day, equivalent to one cup of peas, can reduce long-term risks of colon cancer by 33%. Autoimmune diseases Autoimmune diseases occur when the body attacks itself. Type 1 diabetes is the result of the immune system attacking pancreatic cells that produce insulin. There's strong evidence that it's associated with diet, especially dairy products. When cow's milk isn't fully digested, some protein fragments remain in our body and the immune system kicks in to destroy these foreign substances. However, the fragments are similar to the insulin-producing pancreatic cells, so the system ends up attacking those pancreatic cells too. Genes can't be the key factor since less than 10% of genetically positive infants get type 1 diabetes. On the other hand, all the diabetic kids in a study were found to have cow's milk antibody levels above 3.55, while all the normal kids had levels below that. Another autoimmune disease, multiple sclerosis, happens because the body destroys the insulating layer on the nerves to cause a breakdown of the nervous system. In a study, Early-stage patients were asked to consume less than 20 grams of saturated fat daily. 34 years later, 95% of those in the low-saturated fat group were still alive, compared with only 20% of those in the higher-saturated fats group. Other Diseases Diet affects not just chronic diseases, but also other diseases of the bone, kidney, eye, and brain. For example, bone fractures decrease with a higher ratio of vegetable to animal proteins. Four out of six risk factors for kidney stone formation are associated with animal protein. People with a high-fat diet have a higher risk of dementia, while plant-based nutrients are associated with a lower risk of old-age cognitive decline. Part 3 the Guide to Good Nutrition By now, we've seen lots of evidence that diet affects health and disease. By eating right, you can live longer, look younger, feel more energetic, and avoid various diseases. We'll now explain the eight principles and three rules for a healthy diet. The Eight Principles for Eating Right 1. Adopt a holistic approach to nutrition, not isolated fixes. The human body is a complex system evolved to extract the benefits from whole foods found in nature. So long as you consume the right food, your body will know how to process and extract the nutrients. 2. Dietary supplements are not elixirs. Nutrients consumed in supplement form, such as pills, liquids, and powders, do not yield the same results as whole foods. You can't eat junk food and fix your diet with supplements. With a whole food, plant-based diet, you won't need supplements except for vitamin B12 and possibly vitamin D if you don't get enough sunlight. 3. Almost all essential nutrients come from plants, not animals. An essential nutrient must be necessary for healthy functioning and is something the body can't produce. Plant foods contain antioxidants, fiber, vitamins, and minerals. Animal foods have little or none of such nutrients. Slightly more protein and a lot more cholesterol and fat, all of which are not essential and are even harmful. 4. 
Genes only affect health if they are expressed under the right conditions. Nutrients play a critical role in whether various genes are expressed and are a better solution than trying to remove or suppress genes. 5. You can't totally avoid exposure to free radicals and carcinogens, but you can control their impact via what you eat. 6. Nutrition can prevent, halt, or reverse diseases regardless of which phase you're at. 7. There's no such thing as a specific nutrition fix for each disease of affluence. The same nutrition that counters chronic diseases also supports general health. 8. Good nutrition works synergistically with other healthy habits such as exercise, mental and emotional health. When you embrace these interrelated elements, you get benefits that are greater than the individual sum of the parts. The Three Simple Rules for a Whole Food Plant-Based Diet Great nutrition is actually very simple. There's no need to count your calories, eat an exact amount from each food group, or fret over whether something is vegetarian or vegan. There are only three simple rules to follow. First, so long as it's a plant, you can eat as much as you want, be it fruits, vegetables, flowers, stems, roots, nuts, or whole grains. Second, minimize fish, added salts, added fats or oils, and refined carbs, like white bread or sugars. Finally, avoid animals, including meat, poultry, dairy, and eggs. Go ahead and try the diet for just one month to experience the effects for yourself. Chances are you'll find it to be surprisingly enjoyable once you've made the transition. We've just explained the research foundations and tips for optimal health. The book is packed with information on food, nutrition, and specific diseases. Campbell also shares his personal experience with unethical practices in various medical academia and governmental institutions and provides appendixes on the lab rat experiments, the China study design, and vitamin D. If you've enjoyed the ideas in this summary, do get a copy of the book or visit nutritionstudies.org for more details. Hello, listener. Thank you for listening to our content. Remember to follow us here on the platform. We prepared a graphic of the book with the author's key points and main ideas. Click that book graphic link in description now and have access to an illustrated material with simple and easy steps so you know everything about the book in minutes.